Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I first want to thank you for your fair approach to this, our first hearing on, of the uh, 115th Congress. You've scheduled and you've structured this hearing in, in line with this committee's precedents. In fact, you are including more witnesses in this hearing than uh, the past average for Attorney General nominees. <laughs> Senator Sessions has provided this committee with more than 150,000 pages of material relevant to his nomination. That is 100 times uh, what Attorney General Lynch provost and almost 30 times what Attorney General Holder provided. This material comes from someone we know, someone many of us have served with in the Senate and on this very committee. Yet some on the far left will stop at nothing to defeat this nomination. They oppose this nomination precisely because Senator Session will not politicize the Justice Department or use its resources to further a political agenda. They make up one thing after another to create a caricature that bears no resemblance to the nominee who is actually before us here today. Now, I've been on this committee for a long time, and I've seen these dirty tactics used before, and they're not going to work this time. Senator Sessions, it sounds a little strange to say this, but welcome to the Senate. <laughs> The Senate Judiciary Committee. I'm sure there will be some need to uh, address false claims and fabricated charges during this hearing. Believe it or not, however, I actually have some questions about issues and policies that uh, you will be addressing when you become Attorney General. The first is one I have uh, raised with every incoming Attorney General nominee for nearly uh, uh, 25 years, and it concerns enforcement of federal laws prohibiting obscenity. In the 108th Congress, you introduced Senate Concurrent Resolution 77, expressing the sense of the Congress that federal obscenity laws should be vigorously enforced throughout the United States. It pleased the Senate, or excuse me, it passed the Senate unanimously, it pleased it too. In fact, it is the only resolution on this subject ever passed by either the Senate or the House. Now, Senator Sessions, with your permission, I want to share with you that resolution adopted last year by the Utah Legislature outlining why pornography should be viewed as a public health problem, as well as some of the latest research into the, uh, into the uh, harms of uh, obscenity. Is it still your view that federal laws prohibiting adult obscenity should be vigorously enhanced? Mr. Chairman, those laws are clear and they are being prosecuted today and should be continued to be effectively and, and vigorously prosecuted in the cases that are appropriate. In making this a, a priority for the Justice Department, would you consider reestablishing a specific unit dedicated to prosecuting this category of crime? So that unit has been disbanded. I'm not sure I knew that, but I, it was a part of the Department of Justice for a long time, and I would consider that. Okay. For several years now, Senator Chris Coons and Representative Tom Marino and Susan Delben and I have raised the importance of safeguarding data privacy on an international scale uh, from unauthorized government access. Now, that is why we continue to push forward the International Communications Privacy Act, which establishes a legal standard for accessing extraterritorial communications. The need for a legislative solution was reinforced in July when the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second uh, Circuit held in Microsoft v. United States that current law does not authorize uh, U.S. law enforcement officials to access electronic communications stored outside the United States. If confirmed, will you and your staff work with us to strike the needed balance to strengthen privacy and, and promote trust in the United States uh, technologies worldwide while enabling law enforcement to fulfill its important public safety uh, mission. That would be a high responsibility, Senator. I know you've worked hard on that for a number of years, as have others, members of this committee, Senator Coons and others. So working that out, understanding the new technology, but the great principles of the right to privacy, uh, the ability of uh, uh, individuals to protect data that they believe is private and should be protected. All of those are great issues in this new technological world we're in, and I would be pleased to work with you on that. And I do not have firm and fast opinions uh, on the subject. 
Well, thank you so much. Now, I'd like to turn now to rapid DNA, a technology that will allow law enforcement officials to speedily process DNA samples in 90 minutes or less. FBI Director Comey told this committee that rapid DNA would help law enforcement, quote, change the world in a very, very exciting way, unquote. Legislating, legislation authorizing law enforcement to use this technology, which you co-sponsored, passed the Senate last year. I was disappointed, however, that it got tied up with criminal justice reform efforts in the House. Now, I have two questions. First, do you, do you agree with, Director, uh, with FBI Director Comey and with law enforcement leaders across the country that rapid DNA legislation is important? and will help law enforcement to do their jobs better and faster? And secondly, do you agree with me that we should work to pass this legislation sooner rather than later and should avoid tying it to efforts uh, on other legislative issues whose path forward is unclear? Mr. Chairman, rapid DNA uh, analysis could, could, is a hugely uh, important issue for the a whole American criminal justice system. It presents tremendous opportunities to solve crimes in an effective way uh, and uh, can be uh, produce justice because it uh, is a kind of thing that you can't fake or mislead. So I am very strongly in favor of that. And my personal view after many years in the law enforcement community is that one of the biggest bottlenecks, colleagues, of all of our laws involving uh, prosecutions of criminal activity is the bottleneck of the uh, scientific analysis, the forensic sciences, where we fail sometimes to get DNA back, fail to get back fingerprint analysis, fail to get back uh, drug analysis, yeah. chemical analysis, and all of this slows down and stops cases that should long since have been brought forward and disposed of. Okay. I've read that some Democratic senators accuse you of opposing the Violence Against Women's Act. That, uh, that caught my attention because, like I did, you actually voted to reauthorize it. As I recall, in 2013, there were not one but two bills to reauthorize VAWA, the Violence Against Women Act. One had controversial provisions that had never been received in a hearing, the other did not. Am I right that you supported reauthorizing the Violence Against Women Act? Absolutely. I, I supported it in 2000 when it passed. I supported it in 2005 when the bill, I, on both of those bills I supported became law. And then in this cycle, Senator Grassley had a bill uh, that I thought was preferable, uh, and I supported his bill that actually had tougher penalties than the other bill. And it is kind of frustrating to be accused of opposing uh, VAWA, the Violence Against Women Act, when I have voted for it in the past. There was some specific add-on provision in the bill that caused uh, my concern and I think other people's concern. And, uh, Mr. Chairman, I ask consent to place in the record an op-ed published in USA Today on this subject by Penny Nance, president, president of Concerned Women uh, for America, the nation's largest public policy women's organization, if you can. Without objection, it will be included. Now, I have a question about the Justice Department's Civil Rights Division. The division enforces the Religious Land Use and Institutionalized Persons Act, which protects the right of prison inmates to worship and protects churches and religious institutions from burdensome zoning and other restrictions. Uh, so I introduced this legislation in 2000. It passed without objection in both the Senate and the House. I would note for the record that next Monday, January 16th, is Religious Freedom Day. I hope that you will make the religious freedom of all Americans a priority under your leadership. The Civil Rights Division also has a unit dedicated to combating human trafficking. It is created in 2007, and one of my former Judiciary Committee counsels, Grace Chun Becker, was its first uh, head. Perhaps you could com comment on the significance of issues such as religious freedom and human trafficking and why it's important to include them within the civil rights agenda of the department. Mr. Chairman, religious freedom is a great heritage of uh, America. We respect people's religion. Uh, we uh, encourage them to express themselves and to develop their relationships with the higher power as they choose. Uh, we respect that. It's 
mandated in the Constitution. But there are situations in, in which uh, I believe we can reach accommodations that would allow the religious beliefs of persons to be uh, honored in some fashion as opposed to uh, just dictating everything uh, under a single provision or policy. So I believe you're correct. Uh, we should recognize you know, religious freedom. It will be a very high priority of mine. Well, that means a lot <clears throat> to me. Now, Mr. Chairman, let me close by asking consent to place in the record letters from the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children and the Boys and Girls Clubs of America. They attest to Senator Sessions' work on behalf of the vulnerable children and young people. And I also ask consent to place in the record a letter supporting uh, this nomination from nearly two dozen men and women who have served as assistant attorneys general in 10 different offices and divisions. They say that as both U.S. Senator and U.S. Attorney, quote, Senator Sessions has demonstrated a commitment to the rule of law and to the even-handed administration of justice. I could not agree more. Without objection, Thank you. Uh, those will be included. Uh, Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, uh,